I call the Honourable Member Calvin Davis. Whakarongo mai ki tēnei ori o ngā toki matawhauru e tū atira i te ākau o i pīpiri e tū whera atira te awa o tau mārere, herehere i te riri. Kā rere mā o tū ihu, tai ki ngā rekereke o tāpū ke wharawhara. Raro i a puke tohu noa ko pūhanga hau, takoto kaunga, ko iwi tūpuna, ara mai he tete kura. Kā huki te manawa i te kakara reka o te kāretu, ngā kai tiaki o te ahi kā ko Ngāti Manu, tīhewa Mauri Ora. Tēnā tātou katoa i whakarau i ka tia mai i raru i te tāhuhu o tō tātou nei whare. Tēnā rā hoki koutou tōku whānau whānui ko patu mai i ngā huarahi, mai i ngā pito tāwhiti o te motu ki te tātou ki konei hei tautoko i te kaupapo te rā. Tēnā tātou o tātou mate maha. Mr. Speaker, I acknowledge and congratulate you on your election to your position. I also acknowledge the leaders of the Labour Party, the Honourable Phil Goff and Honourable Annette King. I look forward to working with you both, the Labour Caucus, and to making a contribution to our team and nation. Also, I would like to acknowledge and congratulate the Right Honourable Helen Clark for her formidable leadership of the Labour Party and indeed as Prime Minister of New Zealand for the last nine years. I thank you, Helen for the way you honoured my people of Ngāti Manu earlier this year when you visited our valley and marae and endorsed my candidacy. With affection, I acknowledge my family and friends, those who have been able to traverse the length of Tūkua Māui to be here, especially my wife Moira and my father Panapa, as well as those who couldn't be here, including my children Kelly, Billy and Hidewiti, my mother Glenis, My brothers Patrick, Greg, and my sister Sonia, my brothers and sisters in law, mother and father in law Tom and Raymond Hoddle, <coughs> my numerous nephews and nieces, aunties and uncles, cousins, and my whanau from Ngati Manu. I also acknowledge my many tribal connections in the mid north to Te Kapotai, Ngati Hine, Ngapuhi Whanui, Ngati Wai, Ngati Whatua. In the far north, I acknowledge the Iwi, Ngati Kuri. Te Aupauri, Ngai Takoto, Ngāti Kahu and Te Rarawa, and those of my iwi further south, in particular Ngai Tai, Ngāti Kahunungu and Ngāti Raukawa. I am honoured to have stood for Labour in the seat of Te Tai Tokero, and although disappointed not to have won it, I acknowledge my whanaunga, Hone Harawira, who was successful, tēnā koe Hone. I also congratulate and acknowledge all other Māori members of Parliament and hope that Māori will see the benefits of our presence here. Mr Speaker, I hail from the Valley of Karutu. Across the road from our marae <coughs> stands Puketohunua, one of our ancestral maunga. On the summit of Puketohunua once dwelled my tūpuna whetoi pōmare. From his whare named Tihema, he had sweeping panoramas of the valley and across to Ruapekapeka, the site of the battle, the last battle of the northern land wars. At the foot of our maunga, Puketohunua flows our Karutu Creek, which runs seaward and connects with our Tupuna Awa, known as Taumarere Herehere Itiriri. One of our Ngati Manu Waiata connect these three features to one another in the lines Tuana Mato Kirunga o Puke Tohunoa, Ka Titiro Atu Kirua Peka Peka, Ka Hoki Mai Kite Puna o Oku Matua E, E Kare Kare Nae Ko Taumarere. If you were to drift in the current of first the Karatu Creek, past the foot of Poke Tohunoa, into the flow of Taumarere, you would eventually pass by the cradle of our nation, Waitangi, where, as we all know, in February 1840, a number of Māori chiefs, including my tūpuna Fetoi Pomare, drew their moko onto a piece of paper that is now known as the Treaty of Waitangi. I would like to believe that when my tūpuna pōmare etched the shape of his facial tattoo onto that piece of paper, that he did it in the hope that his actions would ensure the future prosperity of his whānau, his hapu and his iwi. 168 years later and the world has changed beyond what my tūpuna could have imagined. But what hasn't changed, at least in my whānau, is that in the six generations since, from generation to generation through my through to my grandparents, parents, and to my brothers and sister and I, 
is the understanding that our actions today leave a legacy for generations to come and must contribute to the ongoing prosperity of whānau, hapū and iwi. Prosperity of all Māori is necessary if we are to fulfil the words of our great Tai Tokero Rangatira, Sir James Henare, when he once said, it is preposterous that any Māori should aspire to become a poor Pākehā when their true destiny, prescribed by the Creator, is to become a great Māori. Mm. What makes Māori great? I believe any Māori who achieves their potential or beyond and bolsters the standing of their whānau and community achieves a measure of greatness. As a former principal, it was immensely rewarding to witness the joy and satisfaction on the face of whānau when their children achieved. I was acutely aware, though, of how thin those ranks of achievement are in many of our schools. New Zealand history shows that Māori can succeed in the face of adversity, but this success needs to become the norm rather than the exception. The greatness of a lynchion, uh, the greatness of a nation is linked to the distinction of its people. Mr Speaker, I come to the House seeking to make a contribution that enriches our nation through expanding the ranks of those Māori families who seek educational achievement. The lessons of the chalk face have value and ought to be borne in mind as we debate how to innovate, fund and improve our system of education. Being a great achiever begins for our children when they enjoy aroha that is, unconditional love from parents and caregivers who realise that raising children is not a right to do as you like, but an obligation to the next generation. Educational engagement and achievement is vital to Māori greatness and prosperity. We will achieve more with one full generation of highly educated Māori than we will from the last 168 years of grievance. We need Māori to be educated so that we become the people of influence and the decision makers. I've spent 20 years at the chalk face in education. I enjoyed a 14 year career as a principal and, a, and am especially proud of the achievements of the Board of Trustees, staff and students of Kaitaia Intermediate School, which in seven years saw a school turn from almost total academic failure to academic success. We proved at Kaitaia Intermediate School that Māori do not need to wait decades or generations to see improvements to Māori achievement and wellbeing at school. It can happen almost immediately. With the right approach by principals, teachers, bureaucrats, politicians and others within the system, Māori can and will make immense and rapid gains in achievement, which will lead on to Māori health gains and life expectancy, financial wellbeing, leadership positions and influence and being able to collectively and fully contribute to our country. We must ensure our education system engages Māori from their first day of school right through until their last day at the end of year 13 and on to a lifetime striving for, for knowledge, wisdom and understanding. For many Māori, disengagement from the educational system is but the first step in disengagement from society in general. Māori will never achieve greatness or beyond our potential unless we are educationally successful Therefore, it is imperative of Māori are to achieve great things. We need to get the education system right for Māori. Conversely, we, Māori, have to realise one of our greatest weaknesses is to blame the system. We know that history has conspired against us. We know a heck of a lot of our people. A heck of a lot happened to our people that set our progress and development back in a, and has resulted in our struggle to prosper and achieve greatness. But as critical as I am of those who deny the effects of the damage the system has done to Māori over the last 168 years, I am equally critical of Māori who only blame the system for their own failings. Do we, as a people, have the courage to accept responsibility for our lives? It's time for us to step up collectively and, as we say, para te huarahi, blaze a trail. I've sat in hui where the talk has all been about the injustices, the grievances, the excessive navel-gazing that stagnates the mind and saps the energy and the soul. It's time we stopped wallowing in self-pity and instead look for solutions. It's time our hui were all forward-thinking 
positive and solution-based. Last Wednesday, I attended a seminar where a group of Māori gathered to discuss information and communications technology. These people were educated, professional, and motivated. There was no self-pity. There was no talk of grievance. There was no talk of injustice. There were problems and frustrations, but they searched for solutions. We need to replicate that sense of purpose and mission in our hui, in our marae, in our homes. Blaming the system implies we are too weak as a people to help ourselves, that we are victims. Bad stuff has happened, but we must cease to be victims. Māori need to sort ourselves out. Education is the passport, but we need to put ourselves on the flight to the future. Obviously, policy, process, ideology are a part of the journey, and it will happen with a collaboration of the spirit. A kaumātua said to me earlier this year that the problem with our Māori youth is actually us, the adults. His words to me were, we need to lay off our youth and sort ourselves out. If we want our Māori youth to act in a certain way to achieve personal greatness, then they need us Māori adults to be the role models and demonstrate how that is done. If we're serious about wanting to prosper and provide hope for our kids, then us Māori adults need to step up. We Māori men need to step up. It is said, being a male is a matter of birth, but being a man is a matter of choice. Likewise, being a Māori is a matter of birth, but being a Māori achiever is a matter of choice. We Māori men must have the courage to lead our whānau and hapu towards prosperity and greatness. We are renowned for our warrior spirit, but it is time that warrior spirit manifested itself in new ways. We need to replace anger, grievance, and self-pity with dignity, determination, resilience, and forgiveness. I conclude, Mr. Speaker, by stating that I have hope for the future, the future of my children and the future for us as Māori. I believe that by lifting Māori educational achievement and by us as Māori having the courage to take control of our present, we will as a people achieve prosperity and the future greatness that is our destiny. That road to greatness has been paved with trials and tribulations, but those trials and tribu tribulations never stop Sir James Henare, a boy from Mototo, deep in the heart of Ngāti Hune, stand as an example of how our destiny as Māori prescribed by the Creator is to achieve greatness. I look forward to the contributions I can make to this 49th Parliament as an educator, as a politician, and as a Māori for the benefit of the whole nation. Nō reira tātou mā, huri nō i tō tātou whare, rauranga tira mā, e te whānau, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa.